The following question reads that the products of respiration are carbon dioxide and water and we have to complete the equation for respiration. Respiration is when your body uses uh, glucose to produce energy. It oxidizes glucose so it's a reaction with oxygen ends up producing CO2 and H2 and you need to balance this equation. So there are six carbons over here. So there should be six carbon dioxide molecules. We're going to multiply this by six. Uh, the hydrogens over here, there are 12 hydrogens. So on the other side, there should be 12 hydrogens. So I'm going to multiply that by six as well. Uh, the oxygens uh, on this side are 12 plus six, that's 18 oxygens. Over here, there's six oxygens, so there should be 12 oxygens over here. So I'm going to multiply this by six as well. So this is my equation for respiration. Let's move to the next part, part B, which is carbon dioxide and methane are greenhouse gases, which contribute to global warming. State one effect on the environment of an increase in global warming. So what global warming does is that the rise of temperature, it is leading to the melting of the polar ice caps. And if the polar ice caps melt, uh, the, uh, the polar ice caps in, um, in, the, in the Arctic, Antarctica, uh, the sea levels are going to rise. And uh, this also causes extreme weather patterns. So this is what happens, uh, what is happening right now due to global warming. The next part of the question is, Describe how the carbon cycle regulates the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So we're going to discuss uh, uh, the carbon cycle, which is in the first part, photosynthesis happens, plants, uh, etc. Uh, using chlorophyll, they photosynthesize and they remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the reaction, I've given the uh, reaction as well for photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide and water, they react to produce glucose and oxygen is produced. So the carbon dioxide is converted to oxygen. So photosynthesis and plants uh, help to remove carbon dioxide. On the other ha hand, respiration by animals, where respiration is where you convert glucose, use glucose, oxidize glucose uh, for energy and carbon dioxide and water are produced. So this is the reaction which is the opposite of photosynthesis. Animals do this. Animals respire, they produce energy, glucose uh, reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So this is the reaction that produces carbon dioxide. One other reaction which produces carbon dioxide is the combustion that's happening. Uh, fuels are burnt, uh, different fuels, thermal power, power plants, your cars, your trains, etc. They're all burning fuels and they would also be producing a lot of carbon dioxide. So one process is one where carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere. The other is the these processes are the ones that produce or increase the amount of carbon dioxide that is present in the atmosphere. Let's now move to the next part of the question, which is that uh, simple sugars can be polymerized to form starch. So there are, there's a simple sugar molecule like glucose a molecule and they would all add up and they will get connected. It's a condensation reaction. Now the question is part one, reduce the formula of the molecule eliminated when simple sugars are polymerized to form starch. So I will briefly describe what the condensation reaction that converts simple sugars into starch. What happens is you have plenty of monomers of simple sugars uh, lined up and a condensation reaction happens. One uh, of the molecule loses OH, the other one loses its hydrogen. One loses OH, the other one loses hydrogen. And this continues uh, uh, at the ends as well. It keeps on continuing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a chain reaction where lots of glucose molecules are going to get connected. And these two uh, uh, compounds are going to be eliminated. So I'm going to eliminate all these uh, water molecules. These would be eliminated and what's uh, left in between would be your uh, oxygen atom. So you're going to get a molecule similar to these. These would be uh, connected together and you'll get the molecule that's shown over here. So what is produced, reduce the formula of the molecule eliminated. Uh, the answer to this part is going to be it's a water molecule that would be eliminated. The next part of the question is state the reagent and conditions needed to hydrolyze starch into simple sugars. So uh, sugars can be hydrolyzed by dilute. Usually in the human body, the sugars are hydrolyzed by enzymes. Uh, but if you want to do it in a laboratory, it's going to be dilute acid. Uh, you can use dilute sulfuric acid plus reflux. So it's going to break down these sugars. And uh, the simple sugar molecules would be produced back again. So starch would be converted back into simple sugars. The next part of the question, part D, states that uh, the amino acids, alanine, can form polymers. Uh, so part of the structure of polyalanine is shown. 
so this molecule is shown and on the diagram draw a circle around all the atoms in one amide linkage so we need to define uh, we need to describe what an amide linkage is amide linkage is uh, this part over here and this part over here these these are your amide linkages amide linkages are c uh, double bond o and then there is an n and that n is bonded to 1h so this is what an amide link looks like so we've uh, we've circled those atoms next part is draw the structure of the monomer used to make uh, polyalanine so this is the polymer it's a it's a long chain molecule that is uh, that is uh, constructed using alanine so we need to find or figure out the monomer figure out the monomer simply break these amide links these amide links in a polyamide these amide links are the ones that are connecting the molecule together all the monomers together so i'm going to break the amide links so i'm going to break these amide links over here and over here so this middle piece is the is your monomer i'm going to redraw this monomer so it's basically a uh, c with a ch3 at the bottom and uh, so there's a ch3 at the bottom and then you have an h on top and on the right side there is a c double bond o on the left side there is an nh so there's a c double bond o over here and uh it's and on the other side there is an nh bond and that is present now when you break down an amide link uh, the c double bond o side make sure that you add an oh group over there this this side would be the carboxylic acid side before uh before the polyamide was formed and add an h over here this would be your amine side so when these monomers they join up uh, they produce water this oh was lost this h was lost and they started connecting with each other so i've uh, taken this middle part i've broken the both amide links drawn this middle part again the cetyl bond o side would be your carboxylic acid side so make sure that you add an oh over there and this nh side would be your amine side make sure you add another extra h over there to complete three bonds for amine so this is the monomer from which uh, this entire polyamide would be formed from and so this is your alanine molecule